as promised. Today's episode is going to be action-packed, but first, I want to share one of my childhood toys with you. This action figure. Not a G.I. Joe, just a G. It does a really good job of showing the inner workings of an upright piano action. The core of this system is the jack. It transfers the motion of the key up to the hammer. But just as the hammer is about to strike the string, it pulls away allowing inertia to carry the hammer into the string. This prevents the hammer from blocking the string. After the hammer strikes the string and rebounds, there is a catcher that prevents the hammer from bobbling and bouncing into the string multiple times. You can see without that catcher, or back check, it does just that. Flops all over. Part of that catcher carries what's called the bridle strap. This strap helps hold the lower parts of the piano action up if the piano action is removed from the piano or if the keys are removed. You can see with the key no longer supporting the lower portion of the action, that bridle strap is taut. Another part of the piano action cycle is to depress or release the dampers that keep the strings from sounding when we don't want them to. You can see here on the lower part of the action, there's a little lever or a spoon that engages with this long arm, which pulls that damper away just before the hammer hits. As soon as the key is released, that damper returns to its rest position against the string. Well, that's the upright piano action in a nutshell, by a nutshell. As always, there's more to it than that, but for today we need to know the bridle strap, the damper, and the catcher. Ooh, that was like getting through TSA. Where was I? Oh yeah. The action out of the piano could start to clean it up. I initially blew it off with compressed air, but that didn't do a whole lot. Thankfully, these little abrasive wheels, which are meant for a Dremel, but of course can be used in a drill, really help to remove the caked on dirt. With the action cleaned up, I can start inspecting it for repairs. The first thing I look at is the bridle straps. And what do you know? They're complete garbage. Okay, they weren't actually that bad, but they were 105 years old and starting to show their age. Just like these socks I've been wearing since 1993, at this point the cloth has dry rotted. With all the straps off, let's take a look at the dampers. More specifically, the felt head of the damper that makes contact with the string. Well, what do you know, they're also garbage. There's a new damper felt thrown in there for comparison. Over time that felt becomes so dirty and so compact that the dampers eventually cease to silence the strings properly. As usual, water and heat helps soften the old glue so that these felts can be removed from the delicate wooden parts. Glue it to it. While those dry, let's look at the catchers. 
these pads are actually leather and help create friction so that the hammer doesn't bounce. The end ones look okay, but here in the middle, they're quite worn. This particular catcher has been off-center probably its whole life, just like me, and reveals quite a bit of wear. I suppose I could just replace the middle ones which are worn, but I'd rather have an even playing field, so I'll replace them all. some new bridle straps. No, this isn't how the bridle straps were attached originally, I know. But this is one of those compromises we talked about earlier. Replacing them how they were installed at the factory is a huge job, and I don't want to open that can of worms. Time for new catcher leather technically called buckskin. Just like player piano music, it comes on a roll. After cutting 88 of those bad boys, let's glue it to it. These catchers are actually curved at the bottom edge, and I had to act as the human clamp while the glue set up. One of the nice things about hide glue is that as it cools, which happens very quickly in small amounts like this, it grabs pretty quickly. buckskin installed, I can start to attach the other end of the bridle strap. And a little cleanup on the only finished wooden part of the whole action, the hammer rest rail. Notice that I haven't glued on the bass dampers yet. The dampers in the bass section of the piano are shaped a little more precisely than those in the tenor and treble. They're also more stout or more rigid because the bass strings carry more mass. Given their unique shape and unique profile, it's imperative that they line up perfectly to the bass strings. This is why they can't be glued in until the piano action is back in the piano and they can be aligned properly.
Hmm. There's so many options. Uh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Yeah, Steve. <laughs> In other words, right now, with the new strings, the piano sounds terrible. They have yet to be endowed with the gift of chromaticism. There are a lot of things I can do in life, but piano tuning is not one of them. For now, let's disarm this thing. I mean, replace the worn out piano hammers. After 105 years of use, they've gotten pretty groovy. In a bad way. Who knew my toenail clipper would have so many uses? I use this reamer tool to clean off the old glue. I've left the highest and lowest hammer in each section on so I can use it as a guide for installing the new hammers. No, they're not perfect, and neither am I, especially in the middle section, but I think I've got an idea how I can do better next time. Dang, these right-handed shovels. Whoops. Well, that's enough for today. I am quite excited for the next episode. You might even say, I am pumped! Yeah, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> ah. Nope. Stay tuned, if you want. No pressure. Also, season's greetings and Yuletide salutations. If you're into that, thanks for watching.